From the Ridge in High Ridge, Missouri, this is Huggy Kindness from Huggy Kindness Studios. Welcome everyone to Tea Time, a cup of loving kindness. I'm Maddie, a loving kindness fairy and your host of the show. This is episode three, part two um, of Owning Your Own Story, a pathway to loving kindness. And as mentioned in part one, uh, my co-host Abigail Bakewin is here to walk us through an exercise of owning our own story. And so I'll let Abby, you know, take take the lead in um, walking us through that. But to start out, um, as always, I want to thank Shannon Curtis, um, singer songwriter for sharing um, her lovely song, I Know I Know, as a theme song for the Tea Time, A Cup of Loving Cognitive podcast series. It's just, amazing to have your support and we really honor your artistic expression every time we get to play it here at tea time abby take it away hey, abby. hey so before we begin and jump into it i wanted to thank you because you not only inspired the autobiography process but you know you helped inspire me and push me towards my own podcast so thank you Thank you for this opportunity to share um, my definition of what loving kindness can be. And that is to own who you were because it's who you are now, or (laughs) cut that out, cut that out. (laughs) (laughs) When I was applying to Princeton, they had these exercises where you were able to really express yourself. And that's where I was able to own my story. So that's where this comes from. I give credit to those application questions. <laughs> and I'm very grateful that I'm able to exude owning your story. I want people to have the ability to do this as well, because it's freeing when you own your story. It's so freeing. And not only is it a cathartic experience, but it helps you move forward, actually. Um, I wanted to elaborate a little on the differences between looking back and owning your story. Um, Really quickly, there's more of a pride element in owning your story and saying, yeah, that happened, but, you know what I mean? Versus looking back tragically and trying to live, relive it. Um, there's, there's, it's like, can you separate yourself from your past versus, and tell your story versus bringing yourself back there? All right. So there's a five step process to this. The important thing is a mentality and a why before those five steps. So I'll try to get through it real fast. Um, I'm just laughing because, um, you don't put, don't add this part to it, but I'm laughing because I definitely, I'm doing my quirks that that get on my own nerves. So I'm just like, okay, let's just. So, um, why do they get on your own nerves? This is side yeah. therapy. <laughs> okay, yeah, it gets on my nerves that I have pauses in between my sentences okay. because I know it's it's kind of off putting, and I when I get distracted in the middle of my sentence, like an, an off topic thing in the middle of my sentence and I have to share what I'm thinking. Okay. So that those two things I'm trying to work on more. Okay. So. so the cool thing with the recording is that you can take all those pauses um, and then we'll just take what happens before the pause, unless you want the pause in there, you know, um, of what but you the share. Video, I don't care. Like yeah. the video, it's fine. Um, I'm a, I feel like with the visual of someone like you could, they could see me thinking, you know, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. when it's just audio and there's a, a, a silence, it's like, what's happening, you know? So okay. that's when I, I try to avoid too many pauses for myself. Um, okay. It's, it's just too weird for me, but okay. you, you know, you're, you're beautiful, your voice, everything. So the, yeah, I, I, I treasure 
that you have this down. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't. You saw me in the beginning, right? Oh. Like, <laughs> but I feel like we're we're equals, like, in that, like, and that we, you know, like what it comes out to in production at the end is like a finalized production, right? Like, there were things that were taken out. Um, there was strategic additions and placements and removals you know like but like the rawness is what i'm trying to always kind of keep it as close to as possible um and that's me like fucking it up always you know fucking it up in someone's yes. eyes whether that's my eyes or yes. someone else out there but i think preach <laughs> like challenging each of us that's actually where the beauty lies um, each of Thank us. you for sharing that. It's definitely something I need to do. Just, just own myself now, <laughs> like own yeah. myself now. And, and like, I'm actually, I just got kind of excited that I said "fuck" in my own um, <laughs> podcast. Like, I kind of want to keep that little piece. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we look really good on this background, by the way. You look great. I, yeah, I, I love. I, your... I think I look like a nymph, like from no. a different realm. You're green, like it's. In the red, it's perfect. You, you, oh. yeah. It's like we fit. I feel like I'm in your your fairy garden. Like I'm here visiting. Like <laughs> that's how I feel. Like I came here. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, I want to get some like fairy wings that are customized to me because the ones I got for Halloween are they're a bit too small. Or yeah, they're like, like, yeah. Those big ones, they they look amazing. Like I've yeah. seen ones. Um some big angel wings but i haven't seen fairy ones big you know yeah. We're, we we will find them yeah so <laughs> uh, this is your this is your fairy garden too this is anyone that steps into the space this is their garden so i hope you can make it yours and feel comfortable and just being you and be seen in the light for who you are and you don't ever have to feel judged i know this is going out to something bigger than just you and me here in this moment, you know, but to me, like, none of this would have been possible, this podcast series without you being there, supporting me through this, being willing to like be a co-host, the original like co-host, like it really inspired me. And that's because of all the light and joy and love and beauty that you bring to this existence and this friendship so my thank heart you. <laughs> thank you oh, yeah. i like let's just like make a pinky promise that we will laugh and fuck it up together because that's part and, of and, life and I think. not and not over oh, my God. And not oh there we go ourselves <laughs> what did you say <laughs> i said not over <laughs> <laughs> oh my god we need this pinky promise in there yeah, Maddie That's and awesome. I, for those that can't see, are trying to pinky promise through the camera right now. <laughs> <clears throat> That's cute. You feel like you're good to go? Yeah, I feel a lot better. Thank okay. you. Yeah. So before I get into the five steps of how to do this, um, there's a little mentality that you should have prior to doing it. And there's a big why that will help push through. So the mentality here is where we start. It's not step one quite, but this is the start. Okay. Now, yes, thank you. I'm not used to like a, a voice coming in, so thank you. I'm, I'm here like, with you. oh, yes. person. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, um, okay, yeah, I'm so used to hearing my own voice now that from my own podcast, but right. thank you. I'm like, okay. It's a little different, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I like it though. Okay, so this mentality, sometimes a lot of negative thoughts tend to happen when you're trying to visual, like visualize or write down your story, your story, because of other thoughts such as other people have it worse. Why am I trying to share my story? Take that out of your mind. Take that out. Anything negative or anything that's like, having to do with a competition of some sort where you're saying that mine's not as bad or someone else has it worse. Just take that out of your mind. Um, any negative narratives, 
from yourself or others, stop them. Just stop them in their in thought process or just, you know, try to shut it out. And the last mentality. What's the, like, the best way that you found for yourself to just stop the thoughts or ignore the thoughts? To do the opposite, which is to be gentle with yourself. Okay. So this is a lot, the self-talk that I was telling you about, which is um, being a friend to yourself. Like Maddie, I would never, I, I hope I would never be like, you know, so negative towards you. We're very supportive of each other and we always have been. So the way you are to me, do we have to do that for ourselves too. Like yeah. say, you can do this, Maddie. Don't be so hard on yourself. Let's try again. See? So yeah. that's one way to do it is to do the opposite in my experience, at least. I'm sure there's many tons of wonderful ways to um, take out neg negative narratives out of you. Um, and if it's someone else, um, I think it has to do with boundaries, just like trying to just like put your foot down and say um, respectfully that um, you don't agree, you know, and you can do that without starting a fight or a ball, you know. Yeah. So, so when those negative narratives start, just try to nip it in the bud, be positive. And then the last mentality is to try to protect your dream. This this idea that you want to write your own story. Because if you share your dream too much with people that aren't supportive, it'll it almost die. So just try to be weary who, of who you share your um, plans to do this with. You want them to be the, the most supporting supportive people people that will cheer you on so after you have your mentality of just being positive and um, taking out negative narratives about other people's story being worse or something um, we need to know why we're doing this your story can help the next person from here to Paris to anywhere someone just knowing your story it could either help them, you know, direct in a different, you know, over, you know, like, like, let's say a detour versus going through um, the messes we have been through and or to let someone know that they're not alone. This is um, a more of a selflessness uh, mentality. But if you if people want to know what they'll get out of it is You'll get your, if you follow this process, you can have an autobiography under your belt and someone like me will want to read your story. So I'm putting myself out there to, um, I'll put my email in the end so that people can um, send it to me or you and I'll, or I'll, and or I'll forward it to you. Nonetheless, here's the how to, this is the fun part. So if you have a paper, do you have a paper? With you? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay great this is the mind spill remember there's no rules this is going to be completely up to you think of your highlights of your past and the low lights like things that you're and if it gets a little too emotional chances are you're still dealing with those traumas so like like in general someone might be dealing with those traumas so save that for another time that's a different story for another time so the things you're proud of, the things you you own, basically to this point, is what we'll do. Because I know when we discussed, um, what if someone's going through the trauma now? You know, yeah. they would need resources. They would need to reach out and get, you know, take care of the situation before they can own it. You know, so and also like how owning our story. You know, Dr. Brene Brown talks about this a lot with, you know, stepping into vulnerability and moving towards those higher levels of human engagement, of empathy, compassion, loving kindness, where if someone's in it, if someone's in the heaviness of trauma, of pain, of suffering, by owning our story and sharing those stories, it can often sometimes be 
a beacon of light, like a, a like a a light on a lighthouse, you know, to someone that's out there in these stormy seas, allowing them to find their way back home to calmer, you know, areas of, of their life. And I think that's a huge, beautiful, powerful thing. And I'm so grateful that you're here to be able to walk us through this because, you know, I think too often in experiences that I've had through being a social worker and seeing how we as, you know, clinicians engage with, you know, different individuals that are experiencing such challenges and, and suffering, um, we often try to like put up a wall, you know, like that we aren't human, that we don't have these same kind of things happening. But by sharing that like, oh, we've been through something very similar. That's what Dr. Brene Brown talks about. It's connecting to something just as painful in us. Um, and it's that connection that allows for things to get better. It's very rare, like she says, for anything we say, words, to make anything better. It's really connection um, that drives. Um, empathy drives connection, sympathy drives disconnection. And um, I think through owning our story and sharing our stories, that's empathy, that's driving connection. And connection is what often, like, I think truly can free us all. Not, It's not taking away the suffering. It's not taking away those experiences. But like you said just moments before, knowing that someone's there, I think is enough to create an experience of hope that can help us all see that there's a better tomorrow. Yeah. So thank you for walking us through this. <laughs> I wish you had... Um all this down so that you could just say it <laughs> but you just said it so beautifully you know, like like <laughs> i'm so glad you're here because like it's challenging like you can hear me say it you know but to like have someone walk you through it and so that you can master it yourself that is priceless you know i mean it's i mean if you knew how long it took me to be able to say that and all the things I've gone through to be able to say that, it's not easy just to, to, like if someone just heard me say it, it's not easy just to pick it up and grab it and like do it themselves. Like you gotta go through the practice of doing it. And I think it's so awesome that you're here to like help people do that. Like that's something that we can't just say to one another and, and, and hope that we can just grasp it like we have to go through it um yes yeah. so i guess i'll take back my statement that i said before you said that which is what i said was um if you're going through it you can say that for another time maybe you need resources to get out of that situation but if it's if it's gonna help someone else then you know there's a purpose to it so. Yeah, or even like you you said like um you know maybe like 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 kind of how i see this is like if um like like you're walking us through this now and this is like my first time like doing this then if something's traumatic to me yes like setting that aside for a moment is probably best you know but if you think of it like okay you've already like owned your story you kind of went through this process so for you sharing that to someone that's in it, almost like yeah, I see what you're you saying. sharing it to someone like what if like let's say I I'm right now going through this with you and I have something traumatic happening and it, it creates an escalation of intense emotions. By you sharing your story can often help me kind of work through that that trauma, you okay. know? Yeah. All right. Kind of like what I was trying to like. This should be um a exercise two people should do together this that could be something optional okay that would be a great idea so that's i love that how that burst through this conversation yeah like yeah it's like by being together it's like sometimes we can see things that we can't see by ourselves maybe and help encourage each other to just accept and yeah yeah um 
so um, one thing I forgot to mention about mind spilling your highs and lows is just to try to leave it to like one to three words like just so that so that it's a mind trigger to you like you know exactly what you experienced but if you were to just jot down a note so that when you go back to it you know what you're talking about you know what I mean like mm -hmm. I wouldn't know what you're talking about but you know that's what matters okay so any type of trigger words that trigger words in the good way where you're like oh that time in Japan or that that time like for instance mine my my um jotted words were just really simple JRTC and <laughs> this is a bit deep but um I'll, I won't go into it but some people might know the R word that's that's one of my um you know points and uh let's see I have a lot of them. It doesn't matter how many you put or how little. This is what I love about this process is that it's pretty rule free. I I put stuff in the in the introduction here. I'm like, just don't tell my English teacher, you know, like stuff is just like a sin. But like if you say stuff in English books or like anything like that in papers, it's like, what? Yeah. But no, this is to show that it's very rule free. Um, this is how you want to do it. This is a guide. Put a arrow for up or down if this is a positive or negative highlight um, or low light. Are all low lights? Um... No, like I have several low lights that I own. Okay. Yeah, I own them. I don't feel any sort of hurt or, um, and even if I do, I can get out of it and I see the positive spin to it already. Okay. If you don't have the positive, like that's another part of this exercise. So it's the, the tight, like your own jot, um, keywords. Okay. That's a lot better keywords to your, um, highlight or low light. Um, and then if you find yourself getting lost in you know like you accidentally trance into what you are writing about that's a sign that maybe you need to work it out more you know so maybe that's for another time another book but these are the ones we own so um it shouldn't take more than like a good five minutes to jot them down like just like how you were able to after you um do that do you want to do them in chronological order as a question? Some people want to, like, I feel like some people would want to do it topical or in order of importance. I do it chronologically just because it's easier. <laughs> yeah, I feel about. like I would do that too. And it makes more only sense. Only because, yeah, to me, it's like linear. The path it, of my like story. It, yeah. Okay. What, yeah, what do you so think? just put them, I would, I definitely put them in order just the same like um so go ahead and put them in order if they're not already okay next thing just change the years or whatever numbers you have on there as into chapter um so now you have chapter one chapter two and you have you can add fillers if you have other things you're grateful for so if you have other stages in your life that you're completely grateful for you could add those in just make sure it's in the right spot and then the next step to that is to um, put them in, that's actually step two, um, <laughs> chronological order or in whatever order you want. Three is to not only expand it, this is where we get to write about it. This is where we get to talk our stories and um, write about it my suggestion is to put a lesson in the end like what do you want your reader to know what do you want them to gain what do you want them to learn from you so they don't you know either go through it or that they can heal too you know what's the lesson so that that's a template um your story and then what did you learn so that's just like a, a basic formula for that um and the last two are pretty extraneous, um, not not useless. These are actually like bonus steps. Step four would be setting a personal goal. 
do you, like so that this becomes completed if you want to go further so um so these things that you own and if you want to step forward and put it into a um your own autobiography which which you inspired me to do through this process which i am excited to do um i i gave myself seven months to do the basic write-up the draft I thought I was going to start a podcast for this, um, just a series. And lo and behold, I ended up doing it way sooner. Thank you. Thanks to the Lord. Um, he gets the credit because I definitely was putting it off for like next year. So the goals is step four, setting it up in um, doable pieces. Like let's do a chapter a month, maybe. Right. And step five is just to invite someone to go along this autumn owning story journey with you. And anyone listening, anyone who wants to, Maddie, I'm inviting you to do this with me. Hello. We have nothing to gain but you owning your story, you going out in the world more confident, more fierce, and maybe have a book in your hands under your belt. And um, really there's nothing like no there's no there's no like for ten dollars you gotta join well, i look forward to having you back on when you know it's the release of your autobiography oh, yeah. you. yeah um balloons so. dropping and everything <laughs> oh series. glitter definitely oh, glitter yeah. just flying glitter oh <laughs> <laughs> yes so um, I'm inviting you, Maddie, to please do this process with me. Um, yes. If you want to, yay! I yes. got one. <laughs> It'll <laughs> help motivate each other, like one another, to complete yeah. um, accountability. You know, the accountability buddy system. And if anyone listening um, wants to, my email is abigailbaquin at yahoo.com. Feel free to let us know that you want to be a part of this and we can meet up, set goals, and you'll have an autobiography under your belt. Um, at least the template to set goals and to help you own your story. And um, yeah, that's basically it. There's a lot more to owning your current story and the future, but those are different books for a different time. And to be continued well in terms of like owning your story as a pathway to loving kindness mm -hmm. how do you how do you see owning your story as you know allowing you to step into this space of, of confidence just wanting to celebrate each of us in our happiness as loving kindness really the definition of loving kindness compared to compassion is you know loving kindness is you know seeing this 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 well-being, this this happiness for all of us, where compassion is really kind of stepping into, you know, really understanding what someone's pain and suffering is. is um, so they're kind of like two sides of the same same yeah. coin. So, you know, in, in in doing this process, you know, maybe speaking from your own experience of doing it yourself, like, do you see that, you know, as a pathway to loving kindness, and and if so. Um, how, like, how, how can owning our story allow us to help one another, help ourselves to really have this great well-being, this, this happiness as we continue on in our lives? It could definitely be both compassionate towards um, someone else's experience or um, loving kindness in that you're able to accept who you are, um, who you're made up to be, and just you know it's almost like a hug for yourself i want to mm -hmm. say because anything that happened to you you know you gotta you gotta um see the positive like and that's that's basically what it is this exercise and um for example like the princeton scholarship questions probably do a better job of helping you own your story than this template does because it helped me own my story period. But 
the way I was able to map this out was and own my entire story, I find to be beautiful is because these things that are supposed to be so like questionable and like why me type of things, it's like it'll, it'll help someone else. And not only is the loving kindness there to help someone else, it's like that helping someone else helps you in turn um the in and in addition to the confidence and the um happiness that comes from owning your story um so this is why i'm strongly encouraging it to own the parts of your story that you literally own and to write about it try to put the negative ones into a um a lesson learned or positive spin for somebody um because who knows who what what anyone has been through and who just needs to hear it like um it like i said it's debatable if it was the r word or not people on one end who know what violent rape is will be like no that wasn't right um people who know that who i feel like the lord convicted me saying that if someone says no they mean no like there's no if ands or buts there are people that on that end that you know informed me that that was rape you know so that is my r word chapter i was only traumatized when i was told it was the r word <laughs> and i was angry with myself for a good week before that and now this is turning to a little bit of a therapy session but I want women and young girls to know that they shouldn't. My mistake was thinking I could sleep in the bed with a man and not get tempted and not and not tempt him and just keep pushing him off. I kept pushing him off nightly saying no until I couldn't I couldn't, you know, resist. So I want young women to know that stepping close to the line can get you in trouble. So try to stay away from the line if you don't want to go there. And I think that other than young women knowing that, I I don't like sharing that story too much because it's like I do think of the women that were unfortunately violently taken or like you know things of that sort and i'm like you know this is you know you know this is nothing to them you know like this is, they experienced something worse and you know why would i share my story it's just so that the next person will know how to avoid it and I want to reassure so, you mm -hmm. That if it felt that way to you, then that's the way it is, you know? Um, and it doesn't make anything of what they went through any less violent or horrible. Um, it's all considered the same, you know? The same in the sense that it's, it, it just, that's what it was. Someone didn't want that. Someone maybe tried over and over to express no but someone still crossed that boundary. That, that boundary being crossed is the same thing. The intensity to which that same thing happened is the difference, you know? But that doesn't mean yours is not and theirs is. But a story that kind of relates that's completely kind of out of that area um, is regarding like my mental health and <clears throat> For about 10 years, I was seeing a psychiatrist who was basically like just overworked. Like there weren't enough psychiatrists out there to take on the amount of people that needed the help. So seeing this physician, you really only got five minutes or less to see them. And that's not enough time for really anything productive in terms of someone's health and well-being to, to take place. So a lot of neglect happened, a lot of polypharmacy. And, and what I mean by that is basically instead of trying to like 
offer another modality, like let's say like I was irritable and I couldn't sleep, we would just give me another medicine. You know, we wouldn't like try like some exercises or, or some stretches to maybe help, you know, before I get into bed to, to help me relax. So for those 10 years, I was basically a zombie. I was drugged. I was drooling. I was sleeping 21 plus hours a day. And it got to the point where then I, you know, attempted suicide. And this attempt, you know, led me into the ICU due to liver failure. And it took me having to start having the conversation about getting a liver transplant to realize that this wasn't anything that I was doing. I mean, I was taking a lot of this like very personal, um, it was very confusing. I, I, I felt like I was making all the wrong choices with it and stuff. And so I wasn't going to get the liver transplant. I told them, no, I'm not doing that because I, I don't want to take someone's liver when I chose to kill my liver. And so <clears throat> it was those ICU nurses that were my angels because they said, Maddie, they heard my story of what I just shared with all of you in these 10 years. They're like, Maddie, no, this is not you make, just making that decision. This is a system that failed you. This is a mental health system that failed you, that got you here to this point where you're having to choose if you need a liver transplant. And that was the most powerful, liberating experience of my life. You know, right here, like I'm in this ICU and I like am basically like dying and um, at the same time, so liberated um, from these nurses letting me know that how I thought about it this whole 10 years is not how it is or it has to be. And so the other piece of that is that I was thinking, oh, I had this psychiatrist 10 years ago that I met or was given to in a hospital. So that means I have to stick with this psychiatrist for the rest of my life. And they're like, no, you can get a new psychiatrist. <laughs> so we called up a, a resident um, from the resident clinic and they came up and I, I didn't know they were residents at first. I thought they were just, you know, real, you know, I know they're real doctors, but like not newbies. And, uh, they came up and did a whole new psych evaluation and it's been a God gift to have them because they're fresher. Like they have newer perspectives. They're young in terms of how kind of we think about things. Um, not really restricted. I don't think they're as burnt out. They have some just more compassion in their, their step. And so my whole point in sharing that in relation to what you shared is that I thought like it like it was me, you know, like and what I realized is like me taking me going down that destructive path was not how I saw it. Like it was because of that, you know? And so for you, I think when I heard what you shared, it's hard because our, our, we, I feel like as a society, we, we've kind of coerced people or trained each other in like what to think or doubting, you know, and like questioning, like, was that what it was, you know? And yeah, I just want to reassure you that when you share that with me, it is what it is. Um, and I think there's power in you seeing it um, for the way that you feel that it was. Um, yes. Because there's freedom in that, because now it's like you said, you can own that, you know? Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Well, thank you too. And first of all, I want to say thank you that you're still here. We, I always told you time and time again that we need you. So I'm so glad. 
Thank you're you, all Abby. right <laughs> and that you have a great psychiatrist and you know I myself have had several psychiatrists uh, and it's funny when it's funny how we laugh about how we might have thought at one point that we could only have one psychiatrist right and we're like oh no you could switch if you don't even you don't like that but um <laughs> nonetheless um i definitely it took me a whole 40 day fast of i sacrificed chocolate and like i was eating like healthier that's when god confronted me and said you need a you need to confront this issue and that's when I said, you know, what issue? You know, like, you know, I was just like, he was saying, why do you, why were you upset for a whole week when that happened? Why were you mad at yourself? You know, like things like that. I know I blamed myself, but that, that sentence of no means no just was like, boom, bomb, bombarding me. And I was like, doing the whole ugly cry like oh you know but because that happened I was able to forgive that person so it's like either I could have been in my happy bubble with a lot of trauma in my baggage with unforgiveness but now I'm able to accept know that I could have made a wiser choice, but that's for the next person to decide on their own, you know, or, and actually that, um, I, I'm able to forgive. That was, that was the big thing. I'm like, you know what? Um, I feel like the Lord brought that issue up because not only did he want me to start the healing process, but because he wanted me to forgive, forgive that person. And I have nothing against that person anymore. I, um, I like I said, I don't own it, like in a sense where I'm like, yeah, that was the greatest thing ever, you know, but it was just like a, a point where I'm like, you know what, this is what happened to me. I want to tell people and the reason why I shared it today was so that if there is someone listening um, that can make a wiser decision than I did to avoid something like that and it's never our fault but thank you for this time thank you for giving me the space to um even mind spill my own template on how to for you know do a baseline on if you if people want to do their autobiographies and giving a space for people to come along and i can't wait till we finish our... i know yeah and then we're gonna have a launch party yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for anyone that else wants, you know, to join, you know, the listeners as they, you know, start writing theirs and we start having conversations outside of here, supporting one another. Um, yeah, like it could be a launch party for all of ours. Um, as a cool, like owning your story um, little event, you know, that now others can see what comes out of that, that power in us. You know, really looking at, at what we what we went through and how we can really step into that and letting it be almost this light that like shines out of us as we move forward to wherever we travel, you know, along this, this journey. Um, I love you so much, Abby. You're always such a blessing um, and you're a wonderful friend. You too. So grateful you're here too um, for sharing all the gifts that you you bring to this world and to um, your presence here. Um, for all of you um, listening, um, just, I love all of you uh, to the moon and back. Um, the next episode, we'll be looking at um, this, this triangle, a, a way of um, cultivating loving kindness. It's a a pathway that uh, I, I've constructed over the years um, to be kind of a, a more of like little mile markers or guides to, to bring us back to loving kindness. Because as I've shared in other episodes, you know, the way we we practice loving kindness is unique to each of us. It, it's, it's like all those teacups that are out there in the antique shops and tea shops and things around the world, like each of them are very unique in their artistic design just like each of us are unique. Um, and so the way we practice loving kindness is, is just as unique as we are. 
And because of that, you know, the way we practice loving kindness is going to be different. However, these mile markers, these, these guides can bring us back to loving kindness when we start stepping outside of our window of tolerance. When we, when we are kind of driven by those emotions, those intense emotions, those guides can bring us back to that middle path, bring us back to the, this place of non-judgment. So the first one is seeking understanding. The second one is um, non-judgment. And then the third one is um, humility and grace. So, so extending humility and grace to ourselves and others. Um, I didn't mean to like dive into all this. I just wanted to share what the next episode was. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Let's see. Okay. I can't wait. Though. How did they in the last one? I was sounding all sexy, so I got a sound. Yeah, that I that I remember. Yes. Okay. Right. How do I do this? Stay tuned. Okay, there we go. Stay tuned for episode four, where Maddie, a loving kind of fairy, will dive into the three. No. Okay. <clears throat> Stay tuned for episode four, where Maddie, a loving kindness fairy, will dive into the pathway of cultivating loving kindness, a, a triangle that, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It always takes me a second, sorry. If, uh, no worries. Okay. I don't know if I need to bring up the triangle. I can do that Let's in the actual that. session. A triangle which embodies three sides to loving kindness or getting back to loving kindness, like how you explained it to me. Okay. Stay tuned for episode four, where Maddie, a loving kindness fairy, will. Well, I'm the loving kindness fairy. See, I'm not used to being on camera because <laughs> now I'm here, you know, where it's not like just. <clears throat> Stay well, tuned. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Yeah. Stay tuned. I, I guess. This is what I do when I'm not like here with you recording. Should uh should I be off the screen? Just you and you record? Or um I can crop it out. Oh okay. Yeah. I like I like you being here. Okay. <laughs> Stay tuned for episode four, where I, a loving kind of fairy, will um take us on a journey through the pathway of cultivating loving kindness a a, a guide um, to pulling us back or guiding us back to loving kindness when we kind of step into those places of judgment um, and and kind of lose lose our way in being kind and being compassionate with others and so through this this episode that's coming up um, I will walk you through that um, and we'll get to practice the three different um, kind of guides that are, you know, really essential to when you're in the heat of it to bring you back to loving kindness. Something like that, yeah. And then the music, like the music will be <laughs> I love that. Hopefully, I just like fly away. You know, that would be the cutest <laughs> little thing. You should fly away and go to like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome. Oh my gosh oh my gosh too funny to sound oh, what if i did like <laughs> like i'm like pocahontas in my little like do i look like i'm climbing this oh yeah <laughs> Oh my gosh, I forgot we're still recording. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You'll get to see it before it goes out, so. <laughs> I, really oh, I love you so much. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> I love this. We look really good on this background. We, just, uh, uh? we look really good on this background. Oh, you too. Yes, you I do. really feel like we're in the, you're in the jungle. I really feel like you're there and like it's it's, it's awesome. It's like that. the lighting, huh? It's that. <laughs> no, I took so the tattoo artist. So I, I found the font online on this this website where 
there's over 300,000 fonts. And then you just type in like the phrase. So I typed in loving kindness and then it shows okay. you what it looks like. So I picked that one, but then I found, we found this little flower that looks like a heart and it's called like Anthurium. Uh-huh. And Anthurium is like the symbol of loving kindness. Oh. And so he stuck that on the K and then he gave me the file, sent me the file. And then I turned it in to that with Photoshop. Nah. I made it like a, it was called like a mosaic or something. And I was like, hmm. Kind of fun. Yeah. I love you. I love you. Thank you. Have a wonderful week. Yeah. Until we meet again Sunday tomorrow. Yeah. I'm excited. I, I already you. feel a celebration. I do. Yeah. I feel a celebration. Yeah. I'm ready to just throw some glitter in the air. <laughs> I had a nail salon party with one of my clients the other day. Her father like gave her all this stuff for Christmas, like nail stuff and but like we have to like have you know, there's a lot of contraband, like things that they could harm themselves, so we can't really have it by themselves. So I was like, Okay, I'm gonna dedicate some time, like an hour, and we can just sit in one of the rooms and we can have a little salon party and I played like her favorite music and stuff. It was like really cool. She had glitter in there. So that's like why I'm so fixated on glitter right now. It's glitter. so pretty. I'm like, oh my God. I love glitter too. She painted it and then she like sprinkled it on. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, so in the episode I talked about today, I was talking about how I had this vision of heaven and it had glitter in the wind. And it wasn't, it was a vision, like a literal vision, man. Like, yeah. I don't know if you heard today's, I think it was today's, but man, um, I was sitting on like my chair after I was done cleaning or something and I looked down. Next thing I know, all I could see is this place full of glitter in the wind, glitter in the sky, glitter in the water. And then I saw myself swimming in the um, the river. <laughs> like back And I looked so happy. I was like, is this heaven? Like, I was yeah. just like, it was a great vision and glitter to me is like yeah glitter and sparkles i i love it so much for that reason me too yes i'm a i'm a big and the nail sparkles that you're talking about i actually had some just to try to paint the picture that i i had seen and i i swear i i mean it I want to just spend my life just <laughs> painting what I saw. And I don't, like, if I could, I would just be working at that every day. Yeah. It was so, so amazing. Yeah. So, I'll, when I get that down, yeah. I want to give one to you. Okay. From my studio, <laughs> my art oh, studio. That's cool. And... I want you to be in the river swimming. Like, okay. you know, I want the I want whoever I'm commissioning it, commissioning it for to be to see themselves in this picture. What if we made like it would be kind of like a theme? Did I tell you about like the open like space headquarters I wanted to create? Like that looks like yeah. This, okay. All right, so. In this space, there's gonna be like, ri- like little creek rivers, okay. And there's gonna be some film guy that's on like a track, so he can follow us Ooh, as we're swimming. Yeah. And then there's gonna be a bunch of glitter in that water. And then yes. we get to choose like our like really beautiful, mystical outfits. And then you'll be on one like river, and I'll be on the other, and like. We'll get to be able to see each other because it's gonna be like a video, and then we can like, I don't know, I'm just being silly. But I hope it. I hope it. <laughs> <laughs> hope it looks. Uh, <laughs> right now, my brain is not as. <clears throat> I'm sure it'll look great. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> drop off like down a waterfall. <laughs> hmm. 
<laughs> Same. Yeah, just around uh, the river bend. <laughs> <laughs> a waterfall? Yeah. Whoa. That would be crazy. Yeah, because then we know. fly. Our wings spread out. Oh, I see now. And we are free. We yeah. gotta get a really good, you know, editor, because this is not gonna <laughs> look good. It is not. <laughs> I, just, yeah, I know. What is this? <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. I know. I'm we need like a good, like. We'll find a really great editor. Yeah, a really great videographer, a great audiographer, a great um, graphic person, like animation, because. I'm not great at that. And the animation is the hard part. I'm definitely trying to improve my own site for creation. I watched this uh, video from Pixar. To make those movies, like, it's a whole different, like, 10, 15 different departments working on certain aspects of it and maybe they're only working on a little two second clip of that little movie and it has to go through all this stuff for that two seconds to look exactly how they like oh. you know and i'm thinking like oh like i can put together this animation over here in <laughs> a second you know <laughs> Yeah. Do it. And by maybe, maybe if this is within five years, who knows, one year? Yeah. <laughs> who knows? Um, and it has to be a team, you the know. Technology like, might be advanced. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you <know>? Yeah. <laughs> For our vision. Yeah. And like, who knows who we meet along the way, you know, that have those skills already. I can't wait for our manifestation. Yes. Episode. Let's do it. Just let me know I'm ready, like...